Today, Joe Biden speaks out about white supremacy. The Disinformation Governance Board is done before it even began. We've got all of that and much more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Happy hump day. I am joined today by Elijah Schaefer, host of Slightly Offensive, which you can find not only on Blaze TV, but also on YouTube, which I suggest you go and subscribe to if you are not already. We are also joined by Mark Lobliner. It's his first time on the show. He is chief marketing officer of TigerFitness.com, also pro bodybuilder in case you didn't notice the giant guns right there. I'm surprised security let you in. They, they let me in. They did. They, they had bigger guns than me. It is Texas. <laughs> so I was, I was like, wow. Yeah, I was like, I thought we were a concealed carry state. No, yeah. there's no concealing. He's just like, he just walks in. I was like, we, we, I thought this is like the whole idea of there's no weapons on set. But anyway, he didn't, he didn't get the uh, memo. He no. Didn't. No, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on. Yeah, yeah, we're glad you're here. Um, okay, so I want to get into uh, the headlines of the day. So Joe Biden, as we know, very quick to make a trip to Buffalo. Don't recall him going to uh, Waukesha to make any sort of appearance when there was a black nationalist that uh, plowed his way through a Christmas parade full of white people. But Joe Biden, very quick to make it uh, to Buffalo to talk about white supremacy being a poison of our nation and uh, called the shooting. This time, conveniently, the shooting is a terrorist attack. Watch. White supremacy is a poison. It's a poison running through our, it really is. Oh my God, the mask. Running through our body <laughs> politics. And it's been allowed to fester and grow right in front of our eyes. No more. I mean, no more. We need to say as clearly and force as we can that the ideology of white supremacy has no place in America. What happened here is simple and straightforward, terrorism. Terrorism, domestic terrorism. Hmm. So again, conveniently, Waukesha, not terrorism. Mm. Uh, all of the 2020 riots burning cities to the ground, not terrorism. Uh, protesters showing up at Supreme Court justices' homes, not terrorism. This, definitely terrorism. Well, you have to give him um, some props. Number one, he brought a doctor with him on stage. And as you know, doctors <laughs> are experts at everything. So what if it's an educational degree? Um, I like how he also then said clearly and forcibly, I think he meant, but he said clearly, not clearly. And then he, I think he said forcibly. <laughs> so he didn't even, his next word after speaking clearly about something was, was muddled not. and I don't know what he was even talking about. <laughs> and then we go on, he speaks in front of everybody. Who would have known the talking point? White supremacy is like a plague. Oh, clap. I mean, that, the guy is just literally reading off the teleprompter and the teleprompter is clearly very huge because he's blind but ideologically let's talk about this number one anybody who can't just mourn 10 people being murdered is absolutely heartless so like you have to look 10 people died every time someone dies uh, you know heartlessly and in, in involuntarily I don't know if you die voluntarily I guess maybe unless it's euthanasia but if you get killed in a grocery store that's horrible mm -hmm. and I feel bad for the families and, and and every attack that happens in America no matter if it's racially motivated whether it's gang motivated it is a tragedy that this happens in our country you care about black people getting killed why don't you mention for one moment what's happening every day in south side Chicago a, a little six-year-old girl would have just shot the other day and killed I think, what, 10 people were murdered? 17 were shot in just one weekend? I mean, 10 black people being murdered is just called a Saturday mm -hmm. in, in, in Illinois or whatever. So, I mean, to act like they care about black lives, the only reason why they care is because a shooter was white. The same weekend that a shooter, an Asian shooter shot up a church. They don't care about the Christians, don't care about Asian shooters. We don't talk about any of that. It's all ideological, so one reason, and the one reason is to tie the Second Amendment to white supremacy, make white supremacy and racism the issue, and the way to solve racism Racism is to take away the Second Amendment. It's disarming the populace. That's the whole point. Yeah. Do you think it's about the Second Amendment or do you think it's more about identity politics? Because they've managed. The Democrats are very brilliant marketers. They are. They have found a way to tie white supremacy to Republicans so much mm -hmm. that if you're a black Republican, you're still a white supremacist. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Think about the cognitive dissonance these people have. And think about their voters and how stupid people are to believe some of the things that come out of his mouth. This is a man 
who literally mentored and eulogized a grand wizard. And now they're looking at him as the savior of minorities, who, by the way, aren't really minorities anymore. So that's the problem. The problem is it's all a play. They literally have people in a back room, agencies. I believe they are tied to marketing agencies, large marketing agencies that come up with these talking points. There's a reason why they don't pay attention to those murders. I've gone online all the time and say, if we paid as much attention, we just sent $40 billion to Ukraine. $40 billion. What could we do with $40 billion to the south side of Chicago? We can flood the streets with cops. We can have outreach programs. We can put youth sports programs and keep kids out of gangs. They don't care about your kids. They don't care about black people. They don't care about white people. All they care about is power and money. Yeah. And Biden is a piece of trash. And that's why they, that's why he got elected. In, in, as we know, the safest and most secure election hey, of all time. I wonder if his time, electors were far. as uh, real as the uh, followers of his on Twitter, you know? It's, that's a great question. I wonder. Because, million yeah, because now bots. we found out, yep, yep. Well, I mean, that, we all knew that to be true, right? You see the, uh, the amount of, of live stream views that he has whenever they do any sort of YouTube live stream. It's like five people. They got rid of the so, dislikes because yeah. of Joe Biden. Yeah, okay, yeah. so let me just clarify. <laughs> Over half of his followers online are fake, but the people who elected him, they're all real. So, I, like, I mean, it's just like everywhere <laughs> else you look, Twitter, they're all Elijah. fake, you know, they and YouTube and everything. But in the real world, let's just put it out there. He is the most popular president in history. We just don't have evidence of that anywhere else except for the most safe and fair election ever. So I, I want to I, I want to circle back to uh, b both of you made this point about black on black crime happening in Chicago every weekend. Nobody seems to care about that. And now all of a sudden they care so much about black people being killed. Not the same sentiment when it's when it's white people. Um, I actually I keep getting tagged on Twitter because apparently what some Someone has done is taken one of my tweets that I wrote, uh, I don't know, uh, several weeks ago, whenever I just went off on Twitter and pissed off everyone. Yeah. Um, and I said, black on black crime is a greater threat to America than white supremacy. Completely stand by what I said. It's absolutely true. The statistics are there to prove that that is true. But someone took that tweet and tried to pretend like it was part of the, the shooter's Discord page. <laughs> <laughs> and they said he 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 posted this woman's tweets before wow. doing what he did as if I was and they were like thoughts do you have any thoughts on this and I'm like well number one this is a completely made up like this didn't happen and it was a really poor photoshop as well but I was also like number two it's okay to say what he did was absolutely awful and heinous and should never have happened it's also okay to say that what my tweet said is also true like, two things can be true at the same time. I don't like anybody dying. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. I live in Tennessee. Yeah. Okay, we just got indoor plumbing like six months ago. <laughs> like, I live, I live in, I go to some areas with the wrestling squad, backwoods, backwoods areas. I've yet to meet a white supremacist. Yeah. And you can't tell because I don't share the features of my brother, but I'm a Jew. I've yet to have any <laughs> crosses or any of the like burned on my lawn. Nobody really cares. Look, white supremacy, if it does exist in this country, it's, look, it's a problem. Mm. I'm not a fan of white supremacists, okay? World War II was bad, okay? Bottom line is, it's not that big of a problem. I don't feel it is. I feel that they're shoving this down our throats to divide mm. us even further. Because if we unite, we might actually realize that our true enemies are actually the ones on Capitol Hill. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was yeah. going to say, though, on top of that, I, it is so important, though, to define what that is because... You know, with white supremacy, like there's a reason why I've seen articles about the new diversity of the white supremacy movement or, you know, even seeing, uh, you know, Vince Dow, Vietnamese, you know, some multiple mm. generation immigrant, the new leader of the of the white nationalist movement of the youth. And you're going, <laughs> OK, so you've got to just question when white nationalism and white supremacy are being led by non-white people, are we really in the self-hating Jew, uh, you know, uh, area again? Is this, you know, self-hating Vietnamese? How many more self-hating groups are we going to have? Or perhaps are they just conflating intentional nationalism, freedom and rights with white supremacy? And we've seen this constantly in the last few years. You've seen on your show, there was more that list that said that white supremacy was basically everything good with society. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and this is what it's about. It's about deconstructing a society that white people 
people built. Right. And, and the reason why is because the society that white people built, it's very important. It was built by white people, and it was built for white people. If you look at the founding fathers, there was, there was white language used that they said for our posterity, and they talked about even with voting, et cetera. We've, we've reformed and changed things. That doesn't mean everything in the country is bad if some things were bad in the beginning. Just because we might have changed who can vote or we treat black people like humans because they are and we're not treating them like and we're you know getting rid of slavery, things that are good, doesn't mean that every other thing in the country is also bad. And they were saying, you know, being quiet in the workplace is bad and uh, being on time being is on bad time, and yeah. being respectful. And you're going, okay, yeah. look, I get it. There are aspects that were wrong and we should have gotten rid of them, but there's so much that's good. And that's the whole point that you know it's a neo-Marxist takeover because it's like, they're not just trying to say, hey, let's get rid of the bad parts, the, the evil parts of our country. They're saying, let's get rid of the country itself. Let's get rid of this last bastion of freedom of rights. The constitution is in their way because our rights come from God, not from man. And that scares them because they want to control the world. They're not God. They want to act as God. As long as we believe we have rights from God, then they can't do anything about it. So they have to take it all away. I, I want to, so I want to get to um, <clears throat> something that you said earlier, Mark, which is that the Democrats are very, they're very effective at their, their marketing strategy, right? The way that they present things. And, and I, I, I agree with you there specifically with, um, I remember saying it at the time, whenever they, they started this push to like call everything uh, that they don't like uh, domestic terrorism and white supremacy, right? Like the, the, the people who got arrested on January 6th were domestic terrorists. They keep pushing that and conflating it to basically mean if you ever wore a red hat in your life, you are in fact a domestic terrorist. They're like very, very clearly trying to like paint that picture, just kind of uh, weave that in so that they could use a situation like this to do what they're doing now, which is uh, now House Democrats are planning to send their domestic terrorism bill to the House floor oh, this week. Gosh. This is going to create dedicated domestic terrorist wings in the FBI, DOJ, and DHS, it would monitor and analyze domestic terrorism, and it would also create a task force to investigate white supremacy in the army and government, and that task force would submit their findings to Congress. So they uh, basically want to use like 9-11 style surveillance on Republicans, um, you know, and, and then you hear you hear them pushing so hard to call this guy a mainstream Republican, to say that this guy watches Fox News and Tucker Carlson, even though he very clearly did not even like Fox News. You see why they are sewing, uh, you know, weaving all of this into society so that they can push things like this and demonize their political opponents. Well, I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. who wants to be labeled a white supremacist? I sure don't. Right. I sure don't. So, and it puts you on the defensive. Well, think about it. You have moms, to defend yourself. Moms going to school board meetings were called white supremacists. Right. Black moms, domestic terrorists, going yeah. to school board meetings were called this simply because they wanted to have the stupid, useless muzzles known as masks taken off their faces. That's the problem. Now, if you don't like somebody or something, all you have to do is say you're a white supremacist. Doesn't even matter if you're black. I've only met one black white supremacist. That was Clayton Bigsby. <laughs> that's, that is such a good but he was blind he was blind give him the benefit of the doubt he didn't know he just didn't like black people and truly it was his own self hate he had the teenage girl syndrome it's like you know don't worry don't hate yourself for how you look it, it's true though but, um, but that's what that's just to add a small thing to that but that's the point is that all they've done is created a boogeyman racism Bingo. they say the, mm -hmm. the, the, the source of that is white supremacy and now whatever they call white supremacy is now terrorism and you have to realize what this is this is is a Gestapo police state takeover of a country to criminalize opposing political views. And that's what it is. And that's why I was saying about the Second Amendment is that they need to make sure that the Constitution is just a document. And it's a document that's upholding what? Who loves the Constitution? It's the Republicans. They mm -hmm. love our God-given right. rights. And so in order to get rid of the Republicans, we've got, get, got to get rid of this document. And therefore, we've got to get rid of the country. And they, they want to reestablish a new world order in our nation that is a global order with these pandemic treaties, et cetera where we have no rights and unelected bureaucrats make our decisions for us. And I got to say, that's why we have the Second Amendment. That's the problem with the, the problem is God-given rights. Because God is above government. Government wants to be your God. Mm -hmm. They're in it for the power. These people are crazy. These people are nuts. They're power-driven people. Just look at the Cawthorn incident, right? Like he announces <laughs> that there's a bunch of stuff. I'd rather going not. On. <laughs> well, I'm not so even going to mention what it is. Let's say he says, "Look, these DC people are into some freaky stuff." Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, stuff that they probably had for years on this guy because they, they didn't just like they didn't just hey, guess what? I got I got this video of Madison over here. No, no, they had it. 
Once he started, once he slipped, that was it. He's done. They want power. It's not even about money for them. Money's a part of power. But once you bring God into it, someone above the almighty government, they literally told people to stay in their house for two years and people listen. They and they're it. still listening. Yeah, that's a great point. There's still some crazy um, folks out yeah. there or in there. I, uh, okay, so I want to, let's let's talk about the, uh, the Disinformation Governance Board, RIP, mm -hmm. whenever we come back. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Birch Gold. So uh, look, the Fed finally is realizing the dire straits our economy is in thanks to our loose monetary policy. Hey, as it turns out, you can't just spend trillions every year with no repercussions. So to play catch up, the Fed has been raising rates and they plan to seven times this year. You're already starting to see those ripple effects in the housing market as people's buying power diminishes. Have you considered what could happen in the stock market if our economy stalls out? You don't want to wait until that happens. You got to take some of your profits from the stock market now, solidify them with gold from Birch Gold. Gold has maintained its value way better than any other investment in the world throughout history. This is, look, guys, you spend a lot of time working and saving your money so that you can retire. Don't let all of that money go to waste. Do something about it. You can text Y to 989898. You'll get a free zero obligation info kit on holding gold in a tax-sheltered retirement account. That is the word YWHY to 989898. Secure the gains you've made while you can. That is Y to 989898. Really sad news. We actually, when we went to break, we actually all had a really good cry about this. Uh, the Disinformation Governance Board, I don't know if you guys heard, but they actually decided, DHS decided to pause the Disinformation Governance Board uh, earlier this week. And, you know, everything was still in limbo. But they said, you know what, Nina Jankowitz, you are such a strong worker. You are like the queen of misinformation. And by that, we mean you are the one spreading it, of course. Uh, so we still have a place for you here at DHS if you would like it. Well, she said no. So she officially resigned today from the DHS and said she's just going to go back to her uh, private life because she was doing a lot, like making really bad TikTok videos. Uh, parodies of songs singing about disinformation when she is, in fact, the one spreading it. And so, of course, with all of this happening, we uh, have this lovely piece from Taylor Lorenz. Notice the framing of this. How the Biden administration let right-wing attacks derail its disinformation efforts. So it's, it's the Republicans' fault, actually, that none of this uh, worked out the way that it did. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I have so many tears. I have just <laughs> so many. I'm, my face is wet. I've been crying for a long time, and I just don't know what to do because I was really hoping that we would accelerate into communist China faster than we already have in the last two years, and I was hoping it wasn't going to be led by a dictator, but by a TikTok-making, creepy, queer woman who has an obsession with singing children's songs. You know, there was nothing more dystopian about it. And so I, I think, you know, I, I don't have any more S to give, but I clearly have a, a lot of tears. These are very real. Uh, yeah. And and I and I look at this and the way that it's worded, we derailed a disinformation governance board. Well, how are they gonna tell history? Did our founding fathers, the revolutionaries, derail a British utopia? No, they set out to create the world that they wanted and the world that they knew that was right, right? Not just what they want, but what they know is good for future generations. And it's like, who in their right mind would think this was good? Clearly, Nina, who was never in her right mind. For the record, she can sing really well. It was good, it was good singing. Was it? I'm, not, I'm not gonna hate on it. I can't sing like that. Here's the, content, the problem. Though. <laughs> here, here, here's, here's like, it's like, it's like, he's like, I'm actually, I, I subscribe to her OnlyFans. I'm only a fans. fan? <laughs> yeah. Oh, her OnlySongs.com. Only like, I, I, only I would pay for her I'm, album. I'm assuming. I mean, what doesn't she have at this point? By the way, you can find me on OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, so disinformation. The problem is everything that was disinformation has been proven true. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're encroaching this really, really, really scary area that we've seen happen many times throughout history where you basically tell people what the truth is and it might not be the truth. The Nazis did it, they did it very, very, very well. So the problem is if you look throughout history and look at what the Biden administration and the left are doing right now, it is an eerie parallel to things that have happened in history that led to mass extinction of people. And, but again, it's that, what do they call that? Mass formation psychosis? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know, that's too big of a word for me, I'm just a simple bodybuilder. 
what I see it as is tribalism. Mm. And all they're doing is saying these people are wrong and here's why they're wrong. Here's it. I'm a guy who got shadow banned on YouTube in March of 2020 for simply mentioning vitamin D. And that we didn't even call it COVID back then. It was called coronavirus. Remember that when it was mm-hmm. Corona and they were doing the beer jokes? I was yeah. like, look, I don't know what's going on. I just know that some years vitamin D can have, you know, beneficial effects against viruses. I never said any, I, I don't say medical things I don't know that isn't backed by science. Yeah. Next thing you know, my views were cut in like tenths. And the problem with determining what's right and wrong is science, as you know, you're a guy who has a science background, right? It's constantly evolving. When they say this is proven, that means they're not scientists. No scientist is you using the word, this is proven science, this is, solved, this, this is the science, the science says. Yeah. It's not settled. That's why we keep running experiments. I just read an article today on frontal lobotomies. That was the settled science to literally just jack up someone's brain. But then we found out it was wrong. Everything we have shown to be the right information has pretty much been proven wrong. Everything we did in 2020 was wrong. Texas, Florida, Tennessee, they did it right. They're still doing it wrong in New York. So what is disinformation? Who decides what disinformation is? And who are those sources? That's the question. Yeah. Um, I also find it fascinating, the the framing of this, you know, let right-wing attacks derail its disinformation efforts. It's like, wait a second. So what you're saying basically is someone is not allowed to criticize the government, period. Yeah. I mean, because that's all that, what do you mean right-wing attacks? Like, we made fun of it on the internet. That's well, all it, we did. It's, it's scary to me. And the reason why, I, I kind of go against people who were like, don't, don't talk about uh, the girls singing or don't make fun of it. And I go, no, no, it, look, there's something I always do, and I do it intentionally, is I talk about physiognomy, and I'll talk about people's characters and their personalities. Why? Because you can tell something about someone's maturity based on the way that they behave publicly. Hence, why everyone knows I'm clearly the most mature individual at the table today. <laughs> um, no, but I, but I meant this as a, as a serious thing. If, if you are a serious person and you are, are, are approaching something seriously, then you're going to live a serious life of discipline. And if you are someone who cares about internet and righteousness and truth, you should have a damn good history of actually doing that. Mm-hmm. But when you're on the internet having a history of singing songs and singing the songs to the tune of your own party, talking about targeted attacks, if you could just control information by... by getting the voices that you disagree with to, to, to quiet down, and then turning it into something that, I mean, dystopian, singing songs about it as if it's a children's idea and not a potential genocidal predictor. You're an insane son of a gun, yeah. as I'll say on your show, <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not mocking you. I'm actually frightened, like, like the, the DHS that was grilled, who nominated this woman and who came up with this idea? These people need to start being held accountable rather than just pretending like it went away. Whose idea was this? That person is enemy number one. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it, this this whole show so far, we've been talking about uh, the Democrats constantly labeling, you know, all of us are white supremacists, we're all domestic terrorists. You if, are the most. Yeah, be, of course, yeah. the Gonzalez, absolutely, of the course. The Jew and Gonzalez are the, the white yeah. supremacists. Yeah, exactly. I'm just the POC lover. I shop at black-owned businesses. I. You know, but, I don't buy their stuff, but I shop there. <laughs> you, you, win, you window shop? Yeah, but, it's like, that's what all the white liberals do. They just like walk in, oh, it's a little black owned business, but you don't want to pay the prices because the boutique. So yeah, yeah, do. yeah. Um, so, you know, they, they're constantly uh, painting all Republicans one way. They're talking about the shooter uh, and, and claiming that he had an identity that he didn't actually have. They're talking about shutting down disinformation as if it's the other side who promotes a disinformation. Meanwhile, we're getting a, a, a memo that was leaked to Axios that law enforcement agencies are investigating social media threats to burn down or storm the Supreme Court building and murder justices and their clerks, as well as attacks targeting places of worship and abortion clinics. It's like, how many pieces of evidence do we need that this is not the side of violence? How many? How many do we need? These are the same people who are saying disinformation has to end. You guys are the problem, you white supremacists who are constantly being violent. It's like there was one crazy person who went and shot up a bunch of people who, if you read his manifesto, was absolutely crazy. Meanwhile, you've got all of these pro-abortion extremists literally threatening to murder Supreme Court justices for allowing babies to be born, or no, I'm sorry, allowing the states to make that decision. And we're, we can't talk about that. These people are not domestic terrorists. In fact, I think the Democrats would hail them as heroes. 
Well, I mean, I think we shouldn't be surprised that pro-abortion people are into killing things. You know, I think that, <laughs> yeah. should, that should pretty much be common sense. You, the, the problem is, is that violence is only acceptable from one side. Only one side gets prosecuted. Look, man, I'm not going to stand up for, for January 6th. I think it was probably a bad idea to do a lot of things they did. I'm not going to, I don't think it was, in, look, if, if, if our democracy and our country with the largest and strongest, I believe, military in the world. By far. Is, is by far, is threatened by a bunch of boomers without guns, we're screwed. <laughs> like, we're in a really bad spot. Yeah. Okay, the problem is they burned down cities, billions of dollars in damages. And the left is hailing it as necessary, is hailing it as something that needed to be done. And then they're telling small business owners, oh, you have insurance, it's okay. These idiots obviously never ran a business because that's not how insurance works. And some things are just irreplaceable. But by labeling certain violence okay, violence against conservatives appears to be okay mm -hmm. right now. And they cheer it. Anytime somebody on the right or somebody they disagree with dies for whatever mm -hmm. reason, they cheer and they're happy. These people are genuinely evil people. So it's good versus evil right now. It's not Republican versus Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I still consider myself this day an independent because I don't agree with 100% of the platform the Republicans stand for. I'm an independent thinker. But it's legitimately good versus evil. You know, I know I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I can never be done. Elon Musk is considered a right winger now. Yeah. The guy who's literally leading the charge on green energy. Mm -hmm. The guy who's done more for the earth with his electric cars than anybody. He's all of a sudden right-wing extremist. putting machines in chimpanzees' brains, writing openly, I'm going to hell, and this is the guy that is supposed to be the leader of the Christian conservative movement. <laughs> and like Joe he, Rogan. Yeah. The guy's never been sober. <laughs> I mean, I don't, think, I don't think I've ever heard a sober word out of his mouth, which is probably why his show's so interesting. It's amazing. But, but, I, but, but, I, but I just, I, I, I genuinely do realize that why is it surprising, like you said, that like Drew Hernandez had that picture, a woman saying fetus equals a snack on a sign, a woman who wants to eat her child, why would they not kill, this is how you change the language, you know, aged fetuses? You know, I mean, they've dehumanized everybody they disagree with, and this is what's crazy. Think about this. Where we're at is they've now made justice, not the justices, justices, not a human endeavor. It, they've dehumanized wow. justice. Yeah. And so now when the courts have been perverted, nothing is sacred, nothing is safe. Yeah. Uh, all right, we've got more to come, but first we want to thank our sponsor, iTarget Pro. Speaking of nothing being safe, uh, listen, it's a crazy world out there in case you weren't paying attention. You need to be prepared and properly trained to be able to defend yourself and your family. That is what iTarget Pro comes in handy for. This is a system that allows you to dry fire practice with your actual firearm in the safety and comfort of your own home, which by the way, I don't know if you guys have made it out to the range uh, lately, but between the range fees and the cost of ammunition, especially these days, if you can even find ammunition, uh, it's gonna pay for itself in just one time of usage, just in the amount that you are saving, not paying those range fees and not paying for the ammunition. This is a, a laser bullet. It's really, really cool. Uh, it's a laser bullet. You put it into your firearm and you can start your training experience. Dry firing is so good. You, I encourage everyone, please, 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 even if it's not with iTarget, which it should be, you have to dry fire. It's going to help you uh, develop muscle memory, sharpen your target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function, and more. Each gun is different. Each pull is different. Make sure that you are sharp with all of your weapons. You can go to itargetpro.com, save 10%, plus get free shipping with the offer code NEWS. Uh, this is a great gift for Father's Day, guys. All right, it's the letter itargetpro.com, offer code NEWS. We showed you yesterday a uh, part of a Project Veritas expose uh, exposing Twitter and their, you know, uh, there were various employees that were talking about, uh, yeah, they're, we're definitely censoring just the conservatives because the leftists just won't, they'll leave the platform because they can't handle uh, the free expression of ideas. Well, they released another part of that expose uh, on Twitter. It's, just, it's great when they're releasing, when you see the videos about the Twitter uh, em uh, employees, that they're exposing them on Twitter, posted on Twitter. I love that, I love that irony. Um, but a Twitter executive said, censorship is simply necessary and also mocked Elon Musk for having Asperger's watch. As an advertiser, as my business, is what I do every day and why I go out is like, we want it to be as 
fair and transparent and accurate as possible. Yeah. And if that means there ne there's a level of censorship to make it correct, quote unquote, again, and what does correct mean? I guess like, it just kind of goes back to <laughs> yeah. the idea of like, well, what is correct? He has Asperger's. Yeah, is. yeah, I know that. So he's special. Your special needs, you're literally special needs. <laughs> so I, I can't even take what you're saying seriously. That's very ableist. I am offended. That is hate speech, and that man should be shut down immediately. Just saying. Should be slapped at least. I mean, let me just say what I'm thinking. First of all, Elon Musk is the, I believe, next to Putin, the wealthiest man in the world. Yeah. We haven't Putin's all yeah. the secret, though, the trillion yeah, dollars we, of gas that he owns. Yeah, so, yeah. so here, here's Very the thing. Very special needs, apparently. Here's right. the thing. Whether it's Trump or Musk or Buffett or anybody on the left who's really rich, Soros, whatever it is, you don't become a billionaire by being stupid. <laughs> Okay, he's a billionaire, and he's done what he's done. He could just literally with pocket change by Twitter with 40, what, 44, 45 billion dollars. And he even, got, he even got paired investment. He was even smart how he bought it. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. Elon is Genius. probably the smartest man in the world. If not, he's got to be in the top three, top five. Just genius as far as how he operates. I don't care if he has Asperger's. I don't care what he has. That dude's smart. And for some low-level middle management guy to call Elon anything, that offends me <laughs> as someone who has a brain. Look, at the end of the day, these guys are elitists. Mm -hmm. If you don't follow their political ideology, you're all of a sudden a stupid hick. I was literally on Twitter called a hick. I'm a Jew from L.A. <laughs> I don't do any hick things. I can't even hammer a nail into wood. I literally <laughs> hire everything done. Because I'm a city boy, but because I'm like, well, I kind of, I kind of voted for that Trump guy. They're like, oh, redneck hick. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm literally the opposite of it. I am so white collar, which I think is racist. <laughs> that it's not even funny. It's already white. I was gonna say I used to use that as an excuse that I was a, I was a city boy. Uh, as my excuse, but I don't know what happened to me because apparently you can still come out pretty pretty strong there from the middle of the sea, from LA too, exactly. Like yeah. that's a horrible place. But I will say uh, it is interesting and there's actually a theory behind this. I was reading an incredible article about why the elitists are like this and why they look at people like Musk and mock him and why for most people that you're watching the show, why they mock you, here's why. Because the majority of millionaires in our country actually are people who own companies that would be considered to be non-respectable. And, and I mean this from an article that I was reading. It's very important to understand my language here. It's people who own car dealerships, people who own cement uh, and, and asphalt companies, people who own trash delivery, I mean, uh, pickup services. So these are not considered like respectable, um, you know, elitist type positions, but they, they comprise the wealthiest class. Now, the elitism and the status of people that you would say the jobs that are to the most status actually don't pay that well. They pay enough so that people think they're making a lot of money, but they have a cap. These would be software engineers, people in media, et cetera. So I can mock the people I work with even here. Is that, is that this? So people have traded making a lot of money for something that they think gives them status. So then they put all their worth into the status, not realizing the people that run the world are the people who actually make the money. The people who even pay them and give them their status are the rich, idiots with severe autism that are walking around that are the ones that own your company that give you the money so you can act like an elitist to everyone who doesn't have your status. And that's why all the journalists and the people in the media act like such snobs and in tech industries and stuff because they don't have anything to really gain financially. They have enough money so they can feel like they're better than people, but not enough to ever really be anybody. So they take their status, they exaggerate it, they have haughtiness and pride and they feel like, well, I'm just gonna lean on that and I'm better than everyone because I got a blue check or I help with algorithms. And it is narcissism and it bleeds into everything and they're nerds and they're losers and they're never gonna own or control anything. And it is really the blue collar per se people that turn that tenacity that hard work, that, 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 that viscosity and the blood that they even have into something that is, is more tangible, more beautiful, and they expand it. And they're bitter at people like Elon Musk, who's not cool and didn't go to their schools and act like them, yet what? He's more successful. And that's all. It's jealousy. Yeah. That is, that is the coolest thing I've ever heard. Now, as a wise man, 50 Cent once said, <laughs> I'm a dropout, make more money than these teachers. Yeah. Okay, at the end of the day, there's, most millionaires are self-made. Okay, I didn't come from money. I didn't have a silver spoon. We're self-made. Mm -hmm. And the difference between someone who works 40 hours a week, 
doing their, whatever they're, being a teacher or a, a professor, I'm sorry, I don't want to diss teachers, I like teachers, being a professor at one of these, these yeah, I like the teachers who are indoctrinating kids. Yeah. Oh, I like those well, teachers. Well, um, teachers in my community are really awesome. Good. You know, Williamson County teachers are the best. But the bottom line yeah, is... He's in the county where they got called the domestic terrorists. That was me. That, that was his county. Our parents are awesome. That was my county. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah they literally... They told yeah. a school board member, if you don't take masks off, we know where you live. <laughs> I wasn't there, but I should have been there. But the bottom line is... <laughs> wow, that sounds like she needs to be my new best friend. Yeah, it was a heat. Oh, so, he, so, whatever. So the, well, see, don't we assume. About, I, don't just assume. Mis I just misgendered him. Don't I'm assume. sorry. Well, he could be a she. But <laughs> the, the bottom line is, it takes a lot of work. Yeah. I missed both of my first two kids' steps because I was working. Because I was working 80, 90, 100 hour weeks. These narcissists, these, you know, two good, goody two shoes, whatever you call them, these nerds, they don't have the work ethic to become millionaires. Yeah. So they sit there in their little, you know, their little office building, they work their nine to five, but they're not gonna put in that work that that millionaire plumber is gonna put in. And that's. Well, tweet the issue. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They complain. Can, they yeah. can oh, tweet yeah. about it, but they're not in the. They're not gonna. They're not gonna sacrifice their comfort for success. Reliable yeah. sources. Reliable. Don't let us know if it's a reliable uh, source. A very egg-headed reliable source, oh, man. Oh God! Now I'm not. God. You, just boy, you just triggered me. I know. I, I know. You, about I know. I saw you lusting Mrs. after that already. You, something turned on your eyes because I know no one's a bigger fan than Bri of Brian uh, Stelter than uh, her. He has. He, he literally a is. He literally is a thumb. <laughs> He's just no, a thumb she's hiding with it because she doesn't want to seem inappropriate as a conservative woman. But she's behind the scenes. You are the biggest fan. Oh, God. Okay, we got to go to break. <laughs> I'm going to beat this guy up. We'll be back. <laughs> oh, I hate him. He blocked us. Uh, three Wisconsin boys are facing sexual harassment charges from their middle school over accusations that they <gasps> used incorrect gender pronouns on a fellow student. So one of the parents of the accused boys said she received a phone call from the principal over at the elementary school forewarning her, letting her know that she was going to be receiving an email with sexual harassment allegations against her son. She thought like, gosh, what did he do? Did he uh, like he did he inappropriately touch someone? Did he rape someone? What are we talking about here? He's only 13 years old. No, he used incorrect pronouns when addressing uh, another student. So um, this is, you know, this comes at the same time that uh, Chad Prather, I just did his show and he informed me that uh, over in, I believe it's France, calling a man bald is also now sexual harassment. Huh. So, well, every, Brian, Brian everything. Stelter should move to, uh, <laughs> to, to France, you know. Everything least. is sexual harassment now. I'm oh. just against bald people who try to keep the little, like just shave. Just, just shave don't it. keep the horseshoe. Just get rid of it. <laughs> You know, I, I do think we should have acceptable hate speech acceptance for that one. Yeah, no, I, I do too, because it's like, you look like an island now in the middle of the ocean, and it, it doesn't look like a fun one either. It's just scary, and it's weird. It's like you're neither old nor young. Just choose and go epic. Look at, like, Vin Diesel and people. People rock the bald look. Just rock it. We, we got we to gotta move on, but I, but I, I mean, like, we got to move into something more important, which is this misgendering people. And I, I've said this on my show multiple times, is that, like, I literally... Do, care so little about most people I meet that I do not remember their names. And I don't mean that, I don't mean that in any other way than, than honesty. I can only care about a few people and I just don't remember your name. And it's not because I hate you, it's because I don't have the bandwidth to remember everybody's names. It's not a personal issue. My husband is like that. Right. He but does it's not like, remember I, names. I mean, yeah, how, many, how many parents don't even remember their kids' names half yeah. the time, call the wrong child's name? Yeah. So at the same time, it's like once, once you're here and a parent can't even remember their kid's name and you want their kid to remember someone's pronouns, I won't remember them not because I hate you, it's because I don't care care about you and that's the truth and people want everyone to care about them it's so it's such narcissism and self-focus and and self uh, elevation importance in our society it's like you need to earn people's respect you need to you need to ask people if you had close people in your family and for some reason you had some stupid thing like pronouns that you cared about and you really wanted them to respect them maybe they'll respect them and they'll honor them just because they're going to you know bear with your shortcomings and your mental illness as you develop through your life Junior hires are all mentally ill in one way or another. If anyone has had kids, you know that's true. But they're awesome. They're awesome because they're going through development. You do not go into a junior hire's mind as he's mentally changing. Junior hires go through depression, through anxiety. They suffer almost through like everything in this two and a half year period mostly because the lifestyles they live. And then you say that the kids who are wrong, the kids who are, who are, are the mental ones, are the ones who are following the science, are the ones who are following the biology. And then you make this, again, like the white supremacy thing. Now we're not just missing 
misgendering people. We're not just uh, being rude. We're sexually harassing them. I mean, sexual harassment can cause serious consequences long term for people. And then you're going to tie sexual harassment to something as stupid as a word. Words were violence. Words, right? Words were violence. Now words are sexual harassment. Mm -hmm even when it's not sexual words. I mean, I don't know where this stops, and I don't know what kind of society we're gonna have if, by the way, I wanna say that, junior high being probably the most confusing time of a, of a developmental period of life for a kid, that we're gonna start introducing this kind of confusion to the mainstream, we are asking for serious problems, because if that's sexual harassment, then nothing is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we need context. Obviously, sexual harassment isn't what's happening. It could have been a bullying situation where like- I'll give you context. Oh, can I, I love can, I, yeah, can I give please, it to you? Okay. I want context. Okay, so uh, apparently the, the, someone had been yelling at one of this kid who got accused of sexual harassment. Uh, this kid's friend was getting yelled at because he was the one who misgendered uh, the, the other kid. This friend is apparently very soft-spoken and just kind of sunk down in his chair because he was being screamed at that he misgendered someone. So uh, her son came up and defended the other kid saying, he doesn't have to use proper pronouns. It's his constitutional right to not use. Uh, you can't make him say things. Yeah, well, that's the school just being stupid. Yeah, there's I mean, no on, sexual on, harassment honestly, there. Honestly, it's, it's gonna come down to some high-level court cases. And that's what it comes down to. And it's gonna come down to parents going to school board meetings mm -hmm. and getting these, these weak people out. Mm -hmm. And remember, like principals, all these superintendents, those are all positions that work for us. You know, we gotta realize these people work for us with enough pressure, they will fire these weak administrators. At the end of the day in junior high, now I've been in the, my son Thomas, he, he, has, he has a big mouth, right? Like I have my own chair in the principal's office. I tend to be there quite often. But we work things out, we talk it through, that's our school district. If you get a bad principal or a bad vice principal who's gonna go this route just to, for whatever reason, because they're bowing down to the woke mob, that's gonna be a problem. So we need to address this, and we also need to realize that it's like racism. Racism means nothing now. Yeah, yeah. Like racism should be only used when you're really a racist. Right. Like calling me a racist because I, I voted for a Republican, that's just stupid. Yeah. Especially when the Democrat running was Biden, I, who's literally a racist. I have to, I know we gotta go to break, but I just have to say, like, you show up in the principal's office with those arms, I, they're doing anything you want. No I think. weapons I, on campus. Yeah, I, I, need, I actually need you to, like, come to my school whenever <laughs> I have a problem. All right, we gotta take a break. We'll be right back. Be like, Mark, can you just, just escort me why, to why, the principal's why? office? All right, Mark, you are the, uh, I would say you are the, the health and fitness expert here at the table. I was just wondering, we've got a little over a minute left. What advice do you have for Americans? Uh, because I feel like Americans need quite a bit of advice on health and nutrition. Because my personal one is never trust anything the government tells you about health. Number one is unfat yourself. You got to be unfat. You know, you look at what happened in 2020 with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The people who were affected were the people who were overweight. Number one is to lose weight, mm -hmm. get to a healthy weight. And I'm not saying you need to be in super shape or super low body fat. You don't need to be Mark Lobliner. You is don't. What he's saying. And you don't even need. You two are in great shape. You could be a little bit chunkier than you guys. Just yeah. don't be fat. Don't yeah. be obese. Look, fat shaming is a bad thing. I don't like shaming anybody, but but you know what? We need to call it for what it is. Being fat makes you more prone to disease mm -hmm. and it will kill you. Mm -hmm. So it's the new smoking is what I like to call it, you know? So at the end of the day, you know, watch what you eat, exercise daily and get your weight under control. That's the number one thing. And vitamin D, vitamin D. I don't know. We, we'll get we'll get and censored we, for saying that, but yes. Her and I agree. We've we've both had bad phases of heaviness, and you can lose it. Yes. And you can get healthier. It is in your power. Yes. Uh, those of you who have not yet subscribed to Blaze TV, make sure to do that. Use promo code News, and you will save ten dollars. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been great.